territory of a very special place, Monterey Bay. The bay behind me teems with an incredible abundance of marine life, most of which lies deep within its rich waters. In fact, it is this bounty that has been a magnet for people who have been drawn to its shores from all over the world. More than 15,000 years ago, Native Americans traveled across the Bering Strait into what is now Alaska. They used the kelp forest along the west coast of North America as their guide. This kelp highway allowed them to migrate south into new lands with a familiar and reliable food source always within reach. To them, the kelp forest was like a grocery store with a vast array of foods, including salmon, crabs, and sardines. <laughs> My name is Lindy Amani. I'm Ramsey and Alani. The bay you're looking at right now provided a life of abundance for my ancestors for thousands of years. The Ohlone harvested a local reed called Thule to build boats, which allowed them to take advantage of the bay's many resources. The Ohlone dried and bundled the Thule reeds, and then lashed them together with handmade rope. They fished with nets and hand-carved hooks. seeking a better life. The bay bustled with all manners of boats and people of the likes I had never seen before. Perhaps one of the most interesting places I came upon was a thriving Chinese fishing village situated right where you're seated. I could hear the sound of children laughing and an unfamiliar language spoken by a woman hanging freshly caught squid out to dry. I felt as though I had traveled halfway around the world. My name is Jerry Lo Sabado, and this place is very special to me. My ancestors were some of the first residents of a Chinese fishing village called Point Alonis, which was located where the aquarium stands today. Before coming to Monterey, my ancestors were fishermen from the Pearl River Delta in China. Life was very hard for them. When news of the gold rush in California reached their village in 1850, some of the families decided to seek a better life in a place they called the Gold Mountain. Five families set sail from China to California on boats loaded with supplies. The grueling voyage took more than a month and several of the boats were lost at sea. By the time the weary travelers landed on the shores of Monterey Bay, just two boats remained. 
My relatives were astonished by the incredible wealth of life in the Bay, and they quickly changed their plans about how they would prosper in this new land. My family was a fishing family, and all the gold they needed was swimming right here in the Bay. For decades, they fished successfully, but everything changed when the railroad came to Monterey, and it brought new people to the area, all hoping to profit from the riches the Bay offered. These new arrivals viewed my ancestors with suspicion, and it became clear they didn't want to share the Bay with the Chinese. So, some of the villagers came up with a solution. remembered their time in China and knew that some sea creatures, like squid, could be attracted to the surface at night using bright lights. They suspended wire baskets from the side of their boats and lit a small fire to attract the squid to the water's surface. Once they brought the squid back to shore, they dried and shipped them to China. I'm proud of my ancestors' perseverance. My great-grandparents and the other villagers didn't give up in the face of adversity. By fishing at night for something no one else wanted, they adapted to change. As a result, the first commercial squid fishery in California was born right here in Monterey. The Chinese were the only ones drawn to our bay. Stories of a shoreline carpeted with abalone as far as the eye could see soon reached Japan. Around 1900, skilled fishermen made the journey to Monterey to take advantage of this incredible bounty. My name is Larry Oda. My grandfather was a successful businessman in Japan. He was skilled at processing fish. So he was recruited by the Pacific Trading Company in 1906 to help them take advantage of a bay brimming with salmon and abalone. My grandfather shared a house in Monterey with a man named Noda, who established the abalone industry here. Noda planned to harvest the abalone in the traditional Ama way, as the Japanese had done for more than 2,000 years. Ama divers were free diving men and women who could hold their breath for more than two minutes. found in great numbers in Monterey Bay, the sardine. My grandfather saw an opportunity to expand his business, and in 1926, he opened the Sea Pride Cannery right here on Cannery Road. Five years after I settled in Pacific Grove, right next door to Monterey, a new wave of people arrived. At first, I made the mistake of calling them Italian, but they didn't like that at all. I was quickly corrected. They were Sicilian, proud of their heritage, distinct language, and culture. The first arrivals came from a small town of Isola della Ferrari in the province of Palermo. The Sicilians were renowned for their fishing prowess, but despite their skill, were paid poorly for their efforts. The stories of a bay teeming with fish and the promise of a fair price for catching them drew the Sicilians to Monterey. The Sicilians brought with them new knowledge, skills, and techniques, and quickly established themselves as some of the best fishermen the bay had ever seen. What happened next was nothing short of a revolution in fishing and would change the fate of Monterey Bay. In 1917, after the United States entered World War I, an order came from the Army 
Our men needed food that could carry with them into the battlefield. Monterey heard the call and answered with one word. Sardines. Overnight, huge canneries sprang up, and the Sicilian fishermen worked harder than ever. Some years, the canneries in Monterey processed more fish than anywhere else in the world. An important innovation allowed the Sicilian fishermen to meet this new demand for sardines. A larger boat called a purse saver. With its huge nets, this new boat could catch up to four times the fish the smaller boats could catch. It was the mighty sardine that put Monterey on the map. In the 1930s, the silvery tide of sardines earned Monterey the nickname Sardine Capital of the World. People came from all over to fish the bay and work in the canneries. Each year, as the demand grew, new boats arrived with increasingly sophisticated methods of capture more and more sardines. The canneries shifted into high gear, and Canary Row bustled and hung. Some biologists warned that they were catching too much too fast, but those warnings were ignored. Year after year, as profits skyrocketed, it was the cannery owners, not the biologists, who set the catch limits. The owner of the Hogan Cannery, where the aquarium stands today, proudly declared, the sardine supply cannot be exterminated. The constant demand for Monterey sardines matched the base seemingly limitless supply of little silver fish. World War II led to yet another call from the Army for more fish, and Monterey Bay answered. At the height of the war, Kinner Row was processing 500 million pounds of sardines each year. Then, as quickly as the fishery had risen, in just 50 years, the Monterey sardines disappeared. was now a bust. The fishery became a shadow of its former self, and most of the canneries were shut. As I watched this unprecedented removal of fish from these waters, I knew that a fish as resilient as a sardine with natural cycles of boom and bust had limits, and those limits were being sorely tested. No resource is truly infinite. So, I hatched a plan. As mayor of Pacific Grove, I looked at the state of California to set aside underwater gardens, places where ocean life could be safeguarded, an idea that was unheard of in 1931. Today, gardens like these are called marine protected areas. Life forced these protected gardens even as it floundered in the waters near the canneries. They began to grow and expand, giving the bay a chance to heal. Today, the waters before you are part of a marine sanctuary. This is the result of people like you and me recognizing the need to live in balance with nature, just like my ancestors did long ago. The recovery of many of the local fisheries is evidence that the bay is healthy once again. Nature is able to heal itself when given a chance. Monterey Bay is living proof. The work I began nearly a century ago continues today. You can see for yourself. Take a walk along the recreation trail into my town of Pacific Grove, where you will see one of the most beautiful stretches of coastlines in California. Harbor seals, dolphins, whales can be seen from the trail. They're thriving because of our work to protect these special places. Marine preserves can be found all along the California coastline, and these waters are now some of the most protected in the world. Today, the Monterey Bay Aquarium works with the community of fishermen, biologists, and lawmakers across the globe. They're leading the charge to create more success stories like this one for our ocean. Your support of this aquarium is what makes this work possible. It helps ensure that we can all enjoy this incredible bay and the waters beyond it for generations to come. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your visit at the Monterey